Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Weichelt with EXP, and welcome to another episode of Weichelt Wednesday. Today is a great day. We've got Rick Sharga on the call. So let's dive into it. Who's Rick Sharga? Well, th thanks for having me. I'm uh, the executive vice president at Realty Trek, which is a, a website that publishes the largest foreclosure database in the country used by a lot of individual investors and real estate agents. Originally spent a decade at Realty Track. It was my first uh, venture into the industry. Spent some time after that with Carrington Mortgage Holdings and Auction.com and 10X, and have uh, cycled back to Realty Track. Uh, come full circle. That's uh, so. That's what I'm doing today. So well traveled, no doubt. So let's let's get right into it. Uh, Rick, let, tell us what's the state of the uh, the market. What's maybe give us a little uh, market update, an overview, if you will. Yeah, 2022 uh, looks very much like it's going to be a repeat of 2021 when it comes to the housing market in general. Uh, very, very strong demand, which is driven by demographics. We have a huge, huge cohort of millennials that are forming households right now. There's nothing for them to rent. And there's very little for them to buy. So we're looking at uh, still historically low levels of inventory available for sale. We're looking at very strong demand uh, demographically, as I said, and also because interest rates are still near historically low levels. So uh, our parent company, Adam Data, just published a report that showed that in about 60% of the major markets across the country, it's actually more affordable to pay a monthly mortgage uh, payment than it is to pay rent. So it, uh, it it's driving a lot of people to buy. Uh, and uh, uh, builders are starting to come back uh, with, with more starts, which is a good thing but it's going to take a while for, for demand to catch up or for supply to catch up to the demand that's out there. So it uh, looks like we're going to have another year of, of tight inventory, strong demand and rising home prices. So do you think there will there'll still continue to be uh, quite a bit of biddings going on, bidding wars going on, multiple offers due to the inventory, obviously supply and demand, the inventory is down. So you're going to have multiple offers on just about every home. Every time I uh, sell a property, I'm seeing, you know, between 70 and 100 groups show up to our open houses, or if it's showing anywhere between 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 offers on a home, are you going to see a lot of that still continuing? Yeah, in the markets where there's particularly high demand, uh, especially at the entry level or mid price tiers, yeah, we're going to continue to see a lot of that activity because there's simply nothing to buy at those levels. You know, I was joking with somebody the other day that, you know, it, it, demand is clearly weakening because instead of 50 offers, you're only getting 30. Um, but <laughs> but it, it's it's unprecedented uh, what we're looking at. The, the, the days on market are as low as they've ever been. We're getting competitive bids. I do think at some point in, in a lot of markets, we're starting to get to what I call uh, an affordability wall uh, where, where you will see some buyers just opt out because the prices have gotten too high. Uh, and I think that's we're starting to see that in coastal California, uh, the Bay Area, uh, the Pacific Northwest. You might start seeing it in some markets like Austin, uh, Boise, that, that kind of got overheated last year. But but by and large, still going to be much more demand than supply this year. Price, by the way, price appreciation should start to slow down a bit. Um, I, I even if mortgage rates go up, I don't expect to see home prices go down across the board. But I don't think we're in for another year of 18 to 20 percent price increases, probably somewhere in the mid single digit range this year instead. You know what? I've uh, I just got off the phone with a previous seller that purchased last year and they literally appreciated two hundred fifty thousand dollars and they were under a million. It just blew my mind when I ran the comps. I was like, oh, my goodness. I just you don't really, really pay attention to you until you dive in. So that's some pretty amazing uh, numbers there. And people keep just appreciating and appreciating. You think that's going to slow down just a tad, uh, which I think it, I mean, it needs to be because where are my kids going to live? You know, so it's, it's one of those well, things. That's, I, I say that all the time. I'm, I'm coming to you from Orange County, California, where the average, the median price of a home is over $800,000. And, and, you know, how a, a young buyer, a young family can, can even think about starting in a market like that. I, I, I have no idea. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Things do need to slow down a bit. You know, it's amazing. Uh, let's, let's talk about this. I know you and I go way back and we uh, we met in the uh, default in space. So let's talk about the default space. Where do you think uh, that market is going? Do you see we're going to see any change in terms of uh, distressed properties out of the market? Well, ironic that I work for a site that specializes in foreclosures because for the last 18 months, I've been telling anybody who would listen that we're not going to see a huge wave of foreclosure activity this time. Um, 
the market dynamics all weigh against it. The government activity weighs against it. The mortgage industry has done a spectacular job preventing literally millions of unnecessary foreclosures due to COVID. The economy's recovered rapidly. We have more jobs available than we have people looking for work. So, so the, the, the dynamics just weigh very strongly against a wave of foreclosure activity. Uh, that said, we will see increased levels of default and foreclosure activity uh, probably for the rest of this year, just because we were starting at such a low base. Um, in a normal year, we might have 1% of loans in foreclosures. So that'd be about 500,000 loans at any point in time. Uh, right now, there's about 170,000. Uh, and, and it'll take a while. It'll probably take the, the rest of this year for us just to get back up to normal levels. Um, but there will be more activity. And, and for for either investors, uh, agents who are investors or agents who work with investors, if you're looking for those kind of properties, really important this cycle to be approaching the actual homeowners during the early stages of foreclosures. You remember during the Great Recession, just about everything that went into default wound up going back to the lenders. It, it was all REO inventory. And because of the, the record $23 trillion we have in, in homeowner equity right now, 87% um, of people in foreclosure today have positive equity. Uh, they're going to sell those houses before they lose them back to the lenders. So yeah. if you're looking for those kind of properties, you really need to be reaching out to the homeowner prior to the auction this time. And if anything else, as a good agent would, is reach out to the homeowners that are having some stress and de distress and reach out to them, be a, be a guided resource for them and help them navigate those murky waters of they're behind in their payment. Uh, let's get them. There's some other options out there to help people, you know, avoid that foreclosure process. At the risk of shameless self-promotion, that's how most agents who use Realty Track use Realty Track. They'll 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 look for early pre-foreclosure notices and they'll reach out to those homeowners. And and by the way, I think that's a win-win. I think I think realtors can provide a really valuable service. Because the truth is that a lot of people who get into foreclosure don't realize they have options. They think it's a fait accompli that they're going to lose the house. Uh, and they may still wind up selling the house, but that's a it's a much better option to sell a house, walk away with twenty or thirty thousand dollars in your pocket and have a fresh start than it is to lose everything to a foreclosure auction. So I think I think agents can find listings and and they can help buyers or help borrowers. Uh, execute a much softer landing and have a much better opportunity to move forward uh, than, than they might otherwise have. Excellent. Excellent advice there. Uh, so my question for you is, uh, what's the message we want to maybe say to the agents that are watching this? What's the message we want to say in terms of maybe the overall market? You know, it's a numbers game. Uh, and it, it's it's something I, I tell agents all the time is, is you need to be both aggressive and patient, but you need to keep your name out there. You need to be top of mind when that homeowner decides it's time for them to sell. Uh, but but you're going to be patient because, you know, you're one of 1.6 million licensed realtors out there. Uh, there are probably going to be 6 million properties sold this year, 6.3 6 million maybe. Uh, that that only works out to a, a couple a couple sides per agent over the course of the years. Amen to that. I tell my agents, uh, don't be a secret agent. Get out there and let people know that you you're actually there. I'm I'm a big fan of community. Reaching out to my community, not only with the homeowners in the area, but the businesses, and really become one with your community. Good old fashioned real estate 101. So you know the other the other thing I'd suggest is you know look for those clients that are going to be. Um, repeat business. Um, a, a lot of agents stay away from investors because, you know, God forbid they ask for a, a slight reduction in commission or, or something like that. But if, if you can land a client who's going to buy and sell five, six, 10 properties a year, uh, it makes your life a whole lot easier when it comes to that, uh, that, that, that the hardest part of being an agent, I think a lot of times, which is acquiring that customer in the first place. So, you know, visit those local investor meetings, uh, you know, probably the buying coffee and donuts for one of those breakfast meetings is the best marketing investment you can make. You know, that's a great little nugget that you uh, left us with a uh, reach out to the local investor groups and become a trusted resource for those agents that are sending, you know, more than just the one every seven to 12 years. These are investors that are doing five, 10, 15 plus transactions a year and be a trusted resource for them as well. So don't forget about that segment of the market. Got it. 
Well, that's great. Well, you know what, Rick, I tell you, this has been fantastic. And I've always had such a high regard for you and the knowledge that you bring to our industry. I appreciate you being my guest today. Well, you're very kind. I appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk to everybody and we'll have to do it again soon. I look forward to it. This is Robert Weichelt, another episode of Weichelt Wednesday. Have a great day.